So basically you're just going to want to go on the vine, you're going to want to find the nodes. So the nodes are any point where you can see new root growth coming out from the bottom of it. So if you see here, these are aerial nodes, um, and this is actually one form of propagation you can do is aerial propagation, but for this, we're going to do two types of plants. We're going to do, first of all, a chunky, kind of thicker plant, and then second, we're going to do a vine. So this one looks really good for a vine, because um, you can see it's got lo lots of different nodes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut about a quarter of an inch below the bottom node, okay? Okay, so here we have a Peperomia ripple. This is a ruby one. Um, and you can kind of see here, I've already made a few chops to it. Um, and by a few, I mean a lot. Peperomias are like the easiest plant ever, I think, to propagate, because all you have to do is just chop it. You don't have to look for the node or anything like that. You just, oops, literally just snip it. So here we have some little clippings. This is literally all you need, and the babies are so cute. I will show you in a second a Maranta lemon lime. I actually just got this in the mail. They can be a little bit more finicky. They have super thin leaves. So anytime that you have a plant that has super thin leaves, especially when they're um, extremely patterned like this, very detailed, they sometimes, just because of how thin their leaves are, they can be really delicate. And so these plants tend to dry out really quickly. They need a lot of humidity. Um, and they propagate a little bit differently than vining plants. In my opinion, they propagate a tiny bit slower and the roots grow a little bit different. So we got a little baby, baby node chonk, mini chonk here. Um, and this is a Hawaiian pothos. Pothos, I usually have some that are a lot longer than this that are vining and trailing and that makes it a lot easier to cut. This one was kind of close actually to the roots, which is fine. Yeah, these propagate super easily in water, so I did want to do a pothos example. This guy was on my back porch for a while and it's been getting a little chillier, so don't mind that she looks a little sad. But um, Tradescantias are super, super easy to propagate. They're actually considered invasives, um, so they're pretty hard to kill. Here, um, I'm just clipping below a node. These things pump out nodes like crazy, so you shouldn't have difficulties finding nodes. Um, and these propagate super fast. I actually started out with Tradescantias when I first started out with doing plants and it was really a nice segue into becoming a crazy plant lady. And this one actually needs to be pruned, shame on me. Um, if I do prune it, when I do prune it, because I'm going to prune it now because it's going to bother me. Um, actually pruning is so good for the plant because when you do that, if the plant's starting to look kind of sad, and this one has been, just because it's been exposed to some changing temperatures in Cleveland and um, you know, any plant doesn't like that because it gets a little shocked, their, their ecosystem gets a little shocked. The time that you prune them and you take off this old growth, the plant will stop funneling its energy into those sources and it'll actually release a bunch of plant hormones called auxin and in that process it's going to eventually push new leaves, um, new foliage from those places. So like see right here where I'm just pulling. So I must have pulled or nature must have pulled a little leaf out of here. Um, and then a little baby comes out like that. And then eventually it looks like this. And then eventually, eventually it looks like this. And so on and so forth. Oh God, there's still more. Well, you know, it ain't much, but it's honest work, you know? All right, back to the original feature film. And now, snip so that we can propagate this birkin and try not to damage the rest of the plant. Oh, what we have here is a chonk. So here I have all the clippings that I just took, some fire, 
in water, all the elements, right here. So this is filtered water, because I don't believe that plants should really have a lot of tap water. Uh, tap water has harmful chemicals in it, like fluoride or chlorine, um, and that's not so good for the plant systems. They're absorbing everything through these little tiny roots, and water plays a huge role in photosynthesizing, growth, um, and just the overall health of these guys. So if it's not too much trouble and you already drink out of a Brita, um, you might want to use that to, to water your plants. If you want the best results for your plants, take this out um, like half an hour or so before you're trying to do like your mass watering. Um, just because plants don't like to be shocked, a lot of times they have negative reactions to harsh changes in the weather. So don't shock their root systems with cold water. Here we just have a peperomia. All right, this is kind of a fun little vase that my boyfriend's mom gave me. I'm pretty sure she got this at a Salvation Army. Oh my goodness, hi, Beanie. Let's make this one the bushy one because it's not super long like the other one, so the other one will make an even better vine. So basically, to make it bushy, we're just gonna kind of chop below the node. So right there. Basically, you've made these little chunks, and these chunks right here, um, that's gonna push roots out in these directions. And then this is a little bit longer, so this one will be good for a vine. So what we're gonna do for this one is we're going to basically prune it. So as sad as it is. So when you chop, chop, chop like that, and then you keep one leaf at the end, this is the apical, this is the real apical meristem of this, um, and it's pushing out new growth. So this will just encourage the plant to push new growth out of all these little aerial roots here. Um, and so this I'm gonna just stick in there. We will put water in there, but just not yet The important thing too with propagations is you never want your leaves to be your foliage to be submerged in water The nodes can be but you really don't want to expose your um, Leaves because they'll just rot eventually Take more filtered water We're just going to pretty much put all of our little chunks inside so you also don't want to drown these that's the other thing with propagation so a lot of times people are like okay water's the medium they get eager you don't want to drown these and i actually picked this bowl specifically because um it kind of has some space for these so i don't have to cram them all in there together you're changing the water out every three to five days because the plants actually are getting oxygen from the water, so make sure you don't neglect that. Here we're gonna propagate the Birkin. So yeah, just really get creative with this. You can use vases, salt and pepper shaker, I've done that before. And it actually doesn't even have to be glass necessarily. It can also be um, like a mug. It can be, and actually I have heard that some of those, when you have it in a darker container like that, the roots grow better because they're used to growing in the dark. But anyway, same process. Chunk it and leave it. I'm actually gonna put a couple in. So I'm just, I've already put water in this. I'm just gonna put one, this is my lemon lime maranta. And then two, this is my Hawaiian pothos. There's absolutely nothing wrong with putting your plants together. Um, you do want to kind of make sure it doesn't go super far because you don't want to drown the, the stem like that So instead of pouring the water out what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the zebrinas the trade scanty zebrina so To propagate these you just want to make sure that you're pruning off the bottom those leaves And what that's gonna do is that's going to encourage oxen release and it's gonna encourage production of new uh, It's gonna push out new leaf growth and it's gonna push out little You know tiny little bundles like that so this one is good because it's gonna add some cushion in here so that it stops drowning like that. That helped, I'm gonna add a couple more. And actually, um, plants, they like to grow together and Tritoscantias in particular have actually been known to help other plants root faster when water propagated together. So, it's kind of a fun little fact and the reason I have put a bunch of Tritoscantia zebrinas in a bunch of my propagation stations and I always do feel like the roots grow faster. Okay, so this one looks pretty good. Kenny, you look like you have a little flower hat. Oh my goodness. 
So that is pretty much it for how to water propagate. I'm just going to finish putting the rest of these Tradescantia Zebrinas in this mason jar. And then you pretty much just step back and watch them start to take root. Make sure that you change the water every three to five days so that you're supplying your plants with fresh oxygen. And I will upload a video on updates shortly. So if you got anything useful, like and subscribe.